Patrick. And uh, as a thank you for everyone kind of following, liking, and just supporting things that I do on Instagram, Facebook, so on. Um, I'm going to do a few videos just to show you guys a couple things I think about whenever I'm sketching, uh, drawing, etc. Uh, and yeah, this is a thank you for uh, I've been meaning to do this since uh, I think maybe I got I was fortunate enough to get 4,000 followers and such. And uh, you guys have been so awesome. I just wanted to just give a little something back to you guys, um, as much as a little, just a little bit of a thank you for everything. So the what I'm going to talk about right now is just in regards to using reference and not sticking too close to it. Uh, and the best thing to do when you're practicing people, it's really going to be about drawing from life. You know, when you're at a coffee shop, things like that. But sometimes it can be a bit intimidating, or you don't want to look, you know, like a little creepy watching someone from afar. Um, I'll talk about tips and tricks about actually drawing in a coffee shop, but. Uh, you know, we're going to build our confidence. And the things to think about when we build our confidence is just not sticking to exactly what we see. Okay, so I just have a couple photos here just to show you guys a couple examples. One is an a old photo of Mick Jagger, the Rolling Stones, a really cool, cool, posh pose. And the other two is just two little kids on the umbrella uh, while it's raining, looking really sad. Uh, most likely the parents are squirting water on them. I don't know if that's real rain or not. Who knows? But Whenever you're drawing something or drawing someone, if, if there's no story attached, if, if there's no context, as an artist, you have to create that context. You have to create that story. So let's see the person here. You know, I see a phone behind them. It's just a static image. But let's say that they're waiting patiently for uh, like secret plans to be dropped off and they're an informant or something. You, know, you, you want to start to build those stories so you can kind of create the personality. And why I was saying something like that is, okay, so, you know, he's, he's got their shoulders shrugged. And this is just kind of to get the simple idea. So right now, I'm kind of glancing at the reference as I'm drawing this. I may do like a couple simple sketches just to get the idea of the framework, but Basically, I'm just trying to draw this really lanky person, lanky, long person. Move my drawing over just a little bit. There. So someone just like pacing back and forth, like, oh, when are they going to get here? When are they going to get here? And why I was thinking like that in form is because it just had that 70s feel and you know, every time I think about the 70s and just movies, I always think about that one informant pacing back and forth, waiting. For someone to come so he can give the information. But he's also being very cautious not to get caught. So think about different things, different personality traits, like even how someone puts their hands in their pockets. Is it all hands and fingers in or maybe a thumb out? Maybe this person has a thumb out because they're like hitting, tapping the side of their pants, waiting for this person to show up, whoever it may be. So that kind of shows how impatient they are. I had this kind of tilt of the head because they're constantly glancing around, seeing what's going on around them. And then the other, the other arm is just feeling like it's dictating that you know, he's, he's slightly raising it in a fist, partly in anger, but the other part is so that he could look at his watch to see what time it is. And I really like that quicker than the leg right there. So maybe I'll keep that in there to really add to the personality. and create you know a little bit more movement in there. Get that down, shrink that down just a little bit. 
why I'm shrinking it down. Um, I mean, it's Photoshop, so I could do this. But also, the main thing that I want to stress to everyone is that when you're drawing someone, you're trying to get a full figure, and they're always, you know, practice getting their feet. Because a lot of times, what I see happen with students is they draw so big, they only get half the body, or partial body, or you know, three quarters of it, and they never get to the feet. So what happens there is that you're constantly used to drawing something without feet, and feet are very important, especially to grounding the character. Uh, making it feel complete. So as much as you can, you know, every once in a while, make sure you get the full body in there, including the feet. Okay. So I'm pushing a little bit of caricature, of course, but really trying to get that personality across. Really trying to get that. When are they coming? Where are they coming? I can't wait here forever. I'm going to get caught. Oh. And you know, I changed them from a rock star to more of kind of like a, a sleazy type or someone you know you wouldn't really want to trust. Uh, if you see right away or you just know they're up to no good or there's some shady deal going on. And I, a lot of that is, is within how, how far I push down his head. And how much, uh, you know, how it's like he's hiding, like a little turtle hiding, but he's like a little slithery reptile at the same time. Okay, so that's using this one over here. Again, pushing the story. And you saw how I started off very simple. It all revolved around this idea of a story, though. Once I had this idea, then I could push a lot of these shapes. And I'll talk about maybe drawing the figure a little bit later, but right now I just really want to talk about using reference to your advantage. Okay. So next one of these two little girls. Really cute. So there's this really nice moment going on here that I think almost anyone can relate to who's had a sibling or a friend and you're just trying to get out of the rain. So the, the story is all about them too and how they're interacting with one another. So that's what I really want to push. But, you know, they're, they're kind of close, but I want to push them even closer to really show that, that camaraderie. Like, you know, it's, it, we have to get under this together or else the rain is, is going to melt us. You know, I always remember playing those type of games with uh, my brother and my friends. Like, oh, watch out for the lava. Don't step on the lava. And you huddle together to step on the correct stones or whatever. So what I'm starting off with is this the center line because, you know, as an umbrella and there's physical properties to umbrella we got to stick to. And there's a center point. Uh, and the thing we can use that center point is we can use that center point to help stage our characters. So I want them to be really close together. So we have one huddled up right there. And see, I'm drawing through a lot of the form just to really capture the spirit of the whole pose. And then the other one, we'll be holding it maybe with the same arm. But again, their head's going to be a lot closer. I'm going to push the head tilt just a little bit. So that you can really see the staging of that hand coming out. It's like, oh my gosh, is that, that that's rain. That's crazy. And again, m moving the body language so that it's in closer on that side. So there's a lot of things that I didn't put in. There's a lot of things that I changed. But for the most part, the it's the spirit of the photo, spirit of the pose that I'm really trying to capture. And I think that's the one thing you, you got to remember. Once you understand, once you learn all those fundamentals of drawing, you've done all that life drawing, if you stay very procedural, like, okay, this is how many heads tall, da 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 da, then what's going to happen is all your drawings are going to look the same. They're going to be very stiff and uptight. There has to be a point in your education where you have to let a lot of that knowledge, a lot of that anatomy, uh, the procedures that your know, teachers have taught you, you know, there's got to be a point where it has to kind of meld into one step or it just has to go seep into the background so that that artistic part of you, that part that edits, the part that chooses what to put in and what to put out takes over and that's when you start to find your own voice. It may take a little longer for some than others but that just means that it's just going to take a lot of practice because you're not used to it. And I'm making the face right now as I draw this. You know, always make the face as you draw the characters. It's fun. OK. 
Okay. So again, you could see here from here to here, you know, here's the rain. Maybe I'll have her looking up a bit more, or maybe have her looking at her friend. Okay, it's okay, it's just water. We're fine. Probably change the expression on their face instead of laughter to like, oh my god, what's going on? The water's gonna get me. Okay, again, it's all about that story and pushing it. Uh, push it, uh, bend it to what you want it to be. Because a lot of times when people look at your drawings later on, they're not going to be looking like, oh my god, you didn't get the reference right. No, that's not the person you're drawing. What, what is that? Most of the times they're not even there with you. If they see it and they go, oh wow, that's cool. They're really like that. Oh, I feel that energy. Or, dang, that's really sad. Or, ooh, that guy's kind of creepy looking. Who is that that you're drawing? That's what you want people to see. And, and practicing that will help you to understand characterizations uh, and be able to uh, enable you to draw different types of characters from memory. But it you know, it all starts from looking at things, either reference photos or actual people. Now that story has to start somewhere and gradually you'll start to be able to uh, you know, create these stories on your own or take things from life and just push them just a little bit more uh, to create a little visual interest. But just remember some of these simple ideas that I talked about here. Uh, I think that should help you, uh, hopefully help you, uh, when you're starting to draw more from life and if you're just using photos to get started with. Okay? So I hope that helps. I'll probably do more of these videos in the future, but uh, good luck. And uh, again, thank you, everybody.